Texas A&M, 17, Miami, 9. Now, I, I looked at this, and I thought, hmm. Texas A&M still didn't do a whole lot on offense, right? That's, uh, that's the biggest thing here that I took away from it. A&M was still not good on offense. However, the demise of Texas A&M and Jimbo Fisher, I believe, has been greatly exaggerated. They still have incredible football players. They are still really, really good. Let's go ahead and pull up the stats here so you can see exactly what we're looking at. Um, Miami, you know, where this game turned was early, early, because Miami fumbled that punt return early on after forcing a three and out on A&M's second drive of the game. Uh, A&M went three plays, 28 yards, scored a touchdown, you know, which, by the way, Max Johnson uh, looks more poised, I will say. Looks more poised than uh, one Haynes King. So I think that we have a brand new starter in College Station. Uh, Miami wide receiver drops. Just not good. Not good. Uh, missed field goal, blocked field goal in the first half. I mean, that kept it 10 to 3. Miami, Crystal Ball is not good at playing catch up. And it felt like the entire game that he was not playing to win the game, that he was playing to not lose the game or at least not lose it big. Because once you're down 10 to 3, all you need is one score. At the end of this game, you know, A&M was down, what, three, four defensive backs? I, I don't understand why they wouldn't test those cornerbacks. They didn't do anything deep. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, let's see, Matt Cox jumps in. Texas A&M would be dangerous uh, with something. <laughs> you didn't complete the sentence. Uh, and then he said A&M uh, gets another test on Saturday. Yeah, they do have Arkansas on Saturday. It, it's, a, it's a tough schedule for A&M all the way through. Uh, not sure you're still for getting this done, but my goodness. When you look at the overall stats, they were outgained by nearly 130 yards in this game. Now, Miami did have two turnovers. Uh, when you look at yards per play, it was the exact same. But this is yet another game where A&M did not run a ton of plays. Like It's, it's pretty nuts that, they, that that offense cannot stay on the field for whatever reason. Um, but when you look at the rest of it here, I uh, yeah, field position uh, was in A&M's favor. Uh, defensive points or points off turnovers, etc., that was in A&M's favor. Uh, points per scoring opportunity, which is, you know, points off of drives that get inside the opponent's 40-yard line. Yeah, 3.4 to 1.5. Uh, Miami had more trips inside the opponent's 40, but A&M's defense stood up time and time again, over and over and over again. It was interesting to watch. I will say that. It was interesting to watch. I, I think that Miami can be good, but the same problems that Cristobal had at... Uh, da, 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 the same problems that he had over at um, Oregon is exactly what's showing up here at Miami. He is incredibly conservative. And I didn't think that we would necessarily see that with Josh Gaddis. Uh, but I will tell you, the wide receiver thing is a problem. The drops are certainly an issue with Miami. Now, as far as Texas A&M goes, definitely awesome to see, you know, guys like Max Johnson, 10 out of 20, 140, one touchdown, no mistakes, really. No no big-time mistakes, no giving the ball to the other team. Uh, A-chain, 88 yards on 18 carries, uh, not bad. Um, you know, receiving, you got Anaya Smith, full reception, 74 yards. But, I mean, look at these. Look at these numbers. Like, it, you got 32 rushes and only 20 passes. You, you ran 52 plays. Like, <laughs> just not good. Just not good. You got to find a way to, yeah, Ryan McCracken. Got to think A&M couldn't score 30 on the Westlot Pirates. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's getting, it, it, it feels like they can't get out of their own way. You know, it's not that they were awful. It's just you can't pick up the downs when you need it. Uh, going back to those third downs, you know, four out of 12. Again, it's not the worst number in the world, but you got to be able to convert. You got to stay on the field. And it is amazing to me that that defense was able to hold as much as they did with as much time as they were on the field. Like Miami held the ball for 34 minutes. Last week, App State held the ball for like 42 minutes. Like, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Uh, the win probability as the game wore on, I mean, just continued. In A&M's favor, it was it was nuts. It was nuts. So, 
we'll see what AM's made of again next week. Uh, it's easy to win at home. Now, granted, they will be the quote unquote home team in AT&T Stadium next week, but yeah. This is this is going to be interesting against Arkansas because Arkansas their offense can really stay on the field. Uh and I'm I'm not planning on talking about Bobby Petrino coming back to Arkansas, but uh but regardless, it, it was it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, Texas A&M uh surprising a little bit, but you know, they got the win. This is a it was a huge bounce back spot for them. So cheers to them for getting that thing done. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.